theme for this morning is walk worthy of your calling in Ephesians. Can I have the book of Ephesians chapter 4? We can be seated. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. He said, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have what? Received. If you look at it, I'm not going to go to the whole, because I don't have much time, but I will be using some of the verses. If you read the whole, that chapter, you understand. He said, though, you were as a prisoner. Who is a prisoner? Somebody who has made up their mind. To follow God. Just like we heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They purpose in their heart. Though we have to go into this fire, yes, we will go. If what it means to be obedient, to walk worthy of my our calling, is to see go into this fiery finite, we will go there. But they know that God will save them. And did God not save them? He saved them. He said for us, as a prisoner, being locked up as a prisoner, and being focused on your calling, to live what? A life worthy of the calling you have received. You have received a mission. You have received a ministry. That's what I'm saying. That everybody, we have a calling. We have been called. Paul's message to the people of Ephesians, and he's talking to you today. We are not in Ephesians now. We are in Bethel. The word of God to people of Bethel is reminding us that we have what? Been adopted. We have what? Been adopted into the families of who? Of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So, you know, when you look at it, Paul, if you look at the story of Paul, in some, you know, he said to the saint in Ephesians, when he, if you read another version, his word was to the saint. And who is a saint? Somebody who was once a sinner, but now saved. So when we talk about sin, saint, that doesn't mean that person is sinless. It's somebody who was once what? A sinner. And now he's what? Saved. To be what? To be the gospel bearer. We sing that song every time that was sung by John Newton. Amazing grace. How sweet was the sound that saved who? A wretch like me. I was once lost, but what? Now I'm found. Once what? Blind, but I can see. There was one time, if you read that book, all the way down that Ephesians, you know, it was said that, you know, we were once in what? In darkness. But Christ saved us. And he saved us what? For a reason. We sing that song all the time. If you go, let's go to verse 3 of that chapter 4. Verse 3. He said, And devoting to keep what? The unity of the spirit. In bond of what? Of peace. Walking worthy of our calling. We are one, though we are many, but we are what? One body. We are not working against each other. We are working what? Together in collaboration. To do what? To serve God. To make sure the gospel is preached. The Bible says in Mark, it says, go into the world and preach what? The gospel to every part of the world. So we are all called to preach what? The gospel. We are all called. We are created. We are made to do what? To do something. If you go back to that chapter 1, let me just do it. He said in chapter 1, verse 1, he said, Paul, in chapter 1 of that Ephesians, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, he said, to the saints who are in Ephesians, in Bethel, and faithful in who? In Christ Jesus. Verse 3 now says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every word, spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We have been blessed. God has called us. He has saved us. He has equipped us. He has blessed us. He has put in us all that we need to do his work. So he's not just asking to walk worthy. We already have a work. We have been predestined to be who we are. We have been called to be who we are. So we have a calling upon our life that we need to fulfill. So when he moved from that chapter 1, 2, 3, and he gets to 4, he's now elaborating on now that you know that you have a calling and, you have been, and God has blessed you 
with all spiritual words, blessings in the heavenly places, which means all that you need to live life fulfilled, to live a meaningful life, God has put in us. But there are certain ways that we, we need to walk that walk. We'll get there gradually. Praise the Lord. Walk worthy of your calling with, all that, with that gift that you have. Don't let the gift be dormant. So what does Paul mean when he said walk worthy of your calling? If you look at walk, it's an actionable word, action, walk, to take a walk. You get, if somebody who is walking is not standing, you are doing something. It's a doing word. So you are called to do what? To do something. Probably to make impact. Probably to influence people. To be a blessing. To be a giver. And not just what? A receiver. To walk worthy. That, that worthy means to do it in a manner that is what? Honoring unto God. And if serving God means you will go through challenges, still know that I'm doing the work of the master. And know that he who has called me is faithful. And he is more than what? Able to do what? To see us through. If you go to chapter 2 of that Ephesians, I'm just showing us some things before I go to how we need to walk that walk. Yeah, chapter 2 from verse 8. He said, for by grace... From verse 8, chapter 2, from verse 8. By grace, you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is what? The gift of God. Can we go to verse 9? Continue. It is the gift of who? Of God. Not of works. Let any man should do what? Boast. We are saved by grace. It's not something we deserve. It is not something we merit. If it was by our work, then nobody will do what? We'll be saved. But God saved us by what? By grace, which means God what? has a plan and purpose for us. Verse 10 of it. Let's go to 10. He said, for we are his word, workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. Underline, whenever you see some word, say descriptive word, you know, good works. So, which means there are different kind of works. So, if there are good works, there are also what? Bad works. But what calling are you called unto? What work are you called to work out? He said, what? Good works, which God had before ordained that we should do what? Work in it. We talk about predestination. That's another way. It's another big one that many people wrestle with. So, they may, oh, if I'm sick, it means God destined me to be sick. If I am poor, God destined me to be poor. No, God is not merciful. God is merciful. Even though we go through some things, God will not. He said, let him that is tempted say not is God. God does not tempt with evil. He does not tempt with bad things. Sometimes we are tempted by our own evil ways. Sometimes we are tempted. God allows it sometimes just to bring out a virtue in us. So it's not that God himself is the one who causes it. He said we are God workmanship. Created in who? Christ Jesus. Unto what? Good works. Which God had beforehand that we should do what? Walk in them. So which means nobody. Everybody have a calling. As long as you belong to the family of God. You have what? A calling. You have a walk to walk. There's something that we are what? We are made for. We are just not here to just occupy spaces. We are here to influence our world. And I pray that God will help us to impart our word and influence our word in the name of Jesus. So what is the purpose of this calling to work? Why are we called to, to work? Why? Because God, he said that God has given us. He said, blessed be the Lord our God. Who has blessed us with what? All spiritual blessings. In where? In the heavenly places. Are you in heaven? No. We are on earth. But we are blessed with what? Spiritual blessings in the heavenly place. There's heaven on earth. You are living in Christ. You are on earth. You have those spiritual blessings that what has been given by God. And if you look down, go down, if you go down to, to ch that chapter 4 from verse 7 and only this. He said many have been given. How many gifts do we have? Many are called to be what? Apostles. Many are called to be what? Prophet. Who is an apostle? A disciple. We talk about school of discipleship. So if you are not yet one, you know you are one that you have to go through that school so that you can be equipped to do what you are called to do. You are called for what? To work worthy. 
you need to know what you are called for, and you need to know how, and you need to know your enemies. So if you have not done school of discipleship school, I'm encouraging you go and do it. It's good to know your, who you are in God. Know what you are called for. Know how you are going to do it, and know the enemies of what? That work that you are called to work. That school is very rich. And he said we have some apostles, we have some prophets, God's people, God, people that God speaks through. We have people like Moses. God spoke mouth my mouth to Moses. We have people like Jeremiah. We have people like Isaiah. We have different people like prophets that people speak through them. God can speak through anyone. We have some evangelists, people who go about, who take the gospel to, from places to places. We have pastors. If you cannot be a pastor, you should have one of these. We have some teachers. Who are the teachers? People who teach the word of the Lord. So nobody is excluded. Everybody is part of what? This kingdom work. Call to work, work. Worthy. So don't tell me you don't have an assignment. You, ha you have yours to pick from all this. You cannot be a pastor. That's okay. You can be an apostle. You can be a prophet. You can be an evangelist. You can be a teacher. A teacher. You don't have to carry Bible and be teaching here. I at your workplace, teach the word of God. Work worthy of your calling is beyond church. Take the church outside the physical church you know, building. Take it out wherever you go. He said, go ye into what? The whole world. So it's not limited to inside church. So you can be a teacher in your workplace, in your family, in everywhere, wherever you find yourself, at every various relationship level, you can be what? A teacher of what? Of the world. And how are we called to work this work? So we are going to be going there. If you read, let's read that chapter, chapter 4. Verse 12. Okay, I will, read, I will read from 10. He said, he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all heavens, that he might, what, fill all things. And he himself gave some, to the apostles have read it, to for what? For the equipping of the saints. Verse 12. For equipping of the saints, for the work of work, ministry. For what? A defying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of what? The faith and of knowledge of the sons of God to a perfect man, to the measure of what? Statues of fullness of Christ. He's talking about maturity, not being babe anymore. So the gift is meant to equip the saints, the believers, to equip one another, to help one another, to collaborate with one another so that we can win many more world. So to the kingdom. So you are, who are you this morning? Do you identify yourself to be a person that has been called, that has been equipped to equip others. You know, you are what? Training the trainers. Getting training to train others so that others can train and can continue on. I pray that that which God has deposited in our life, we, we will use it on his glory in the name of Jesus. So now that you know that you have a calling, you have been saved and predestined to walk a work that has been set apart for just you. Nobody will do your work. Nobody will worship God for you. We sing that song. No one will work. No one will worship you for me. There is my worship. All of my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. We have what? A work to work. Nobody will serve God for you. Nobody will do your part. The pastor will do his part. Ministers will do their part. Teachers will do their part. But you do your part. And the kingdom of God will, what? will be rejoicing. So how are we to walk worthy of this calling? The number one point I'm bringing out here. If you go back to that chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. If, you can, if I can have it up or I will be reading here. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 2. Let's see how we are going to be walking worthy. He said, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, for bearing with what? One another in love. So we can, how do we walk this walk? When we talk about lowliness, it doesn't mean that you are down on the ground and you are nobody. It's talking about humility. And Jesus is our example. With what? Humility. You're working what did of your calling by being what? Humble. And they talk about what? Gentleness. Long-suffering. 
and forbearing one another in what? In love. All these are essential key of working worthy of our calling. And some of them are part of what? The word. We talk about the fruit of the spirit. I'm not going there in Galatians chapter 5. If you read from 5, 22 to 23. Love, patience, long suffering, gentleness. All those are the word. Fruit of the spirit. We cannot be called to work the work of the law without having bearing fruit. We are to bear fruit. Because if we don't produce all this fruit, then it will be difficult to work worthy. It will be difficult to do what we are doing to in honor to what? To the name of the Lord. So say to yourself, I will walk in humility. I will be gentle. I will exercise long suffering. You know, God will put some difficult people in your life. You need this. This is a, if you don't have long suffering. You need to go and learn it. It says, you know, it is a virtue you need to have. Some people will just be difficult and you want to run away from them. You can't run away. It's your ministry. That is, you are for them. God brought you to the world to minister to them. So you need, it's just learning how to relate with them. It's all about relationship. Learning to relate with every people. It doesn't matter difficult, simple. God will not bring us simple people to your life in working worthy of your calling. He will bring difficult people. Why will he bring difficult people? It virtues to be developed in you. He will bring people that bless you. Praise the Lord. So we need to walk what? In humility, gentleness, long suffering, and forbearing one another. In love, be with your sister, be with your brother. Before you judge them, think about what could they be going through? What could be happening in their life for them to have this reaction? Don't be quick to judge because of that reaction that you get from them. Think outside the box and say, oh, could she be going through something that is lasting it like this? I pray God help us in Jesus' name. If you go to verse 3 of that Ephesians chapter 4, it says, And divine to keep what? The unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Praise the Lord. We need to walk in what? Unity and in peace. Amos 3, 3 says, Can two walk together and said they be agree? There has to be agreement. We are not working against each other. We are working for God. We are working in collaboration. We are running the kingdom race, you know, alongside each other. If your ministry is different from mine, we need to collaborate. We need to work so that we can together put a force. He said, one, we chase what? A thousand. And two, we put 10,000 to flight. If you join your energy, those energy, let's put them together, you know, and push. And we will win many souls unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Unity is important. With unity, division will what? We not stand. But when there is a disunity, that's where you see division. No division in this church. All we have is what? We are one united world. People. And with unity, we can achieve tremendous things for God. And I pray God will use us to achieve many things in the name of Jesus. God already made peace. He made peace with us while we are yet sinner if you go to verse 14 of that chapter of chapter 2 you don't have to go there we'll just say it he said he made peace with us in one body by breaking the walls that was a wall that stood between us and god god broke it and brought so god wants us to be what a bridge connector god wants us to be what the one that we connect other people to him so we are working worthy of our calling by what being humble gentleness, long suffering, and forbearing one another in love. And the next step is we are working in what? In unity and in peace. So the third one that I have there is walk as a new man in Christ. Praise the Lord. He said this I say, therefore, verse 17 of chapter 4, this I say, therefore, and I testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles who walk in the futility of their mind. Chapter 4, verse 17. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from who? The life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts. So we need to walk as a new man. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are what? Pass away. Anger, malice, you know what? All those things, envy, jealousy, bitterness, hatred, backbiting, gossiping. You should not be part of us. If you are working worthy of your calling, all those things are old things. We need to put them aside. Those are baggages that will hinder us from working worthy of our calling. That we need to put, what? put aside. I pray God will help us to walk in humility in the, in the name of Jesus. To be humble, to be gentle, long-suffering, and to be able to what? Bear with one another. 
in love and in peace in the name of Jesus. He will walk, help us to walk as a new man in Christ. We can't walk the walk as an old man. That's why it is difficult for some people to win so. In church, they want to lift up holy hand. In your workplace, are you the same person as you are at Bethel? I say this to my kids all the time. When you go out, you represent three people. The number one person, you are, because you are the first contact, you are representing yourself. And after they look at you, they want to connect you to your parent. Your parent, and when they see you, they see your parent. They are connecting you back to who? To God. So three people. Represent yourself well. That's it, integrity. Represent your parent well everywhere you go to. Represent God well because every action that you have affects you first to your parent and to God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We need to walk as a new man in Christ. The fourth point, walk in the spirit. And we should not grieve the chapter that chapter 4 verse to 32 he said and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another even as god in christ forgave you since, the, you know, we have to do what? Learn to do what? Walk in the spirit. If we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Backbiting, bitterness, those things are what? The things of what? Of the flesh. And you know, you say, walk in the spirit so that you don't grieve what? Walk in the Holy Spirit so that you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Some people think, oh, Holy Spirit cannot be grieved because he knows it's not a pain. It's a spirit we can't see. But he can. If you want to know, I know we talk about we talk about uh, King Saul. That we argue that he didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But he had the Spirit of God upon him. Because God told Samuel to do what? Anoint him. When you have the anointing of God, the Spirit of God is supposed to come into you. Not just upon you, but within you to do what? Indwelling. But you know why was it easy for God to take away his Spirit from Saul? Because he didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. On the other side, if you look at the life of David... When David was anointed too, whenever he sinned, he has the indwelling. He was a worshiper. He let the spirit of God dwell in him. And if you read his account, you know, even when he sinned to God, that was a place we sing his song. Creating me a clean heart, O Lord. I renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I renew a right spirit within me. He knows how to worship God. He knows when he sinned to connect back to God. I said, don't take away your Holy Spirit from me. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. Even right now, you know, if you grieve the Holy Spirit, if you are not walking, if he's prompting you and you are not listening, it's not that it will physically depart from you, but he can be silenced and you will no longer hear from God. Saul was no longer hearing from God. That was why he found it easy to go in his own way. That spirit departed from him. I pray we will not lose the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. We need to walk in humility. We need to walk in what? In unity. In peace. We need to walk as a new man. We need to walk in what? In the spirit. And we should not try to do what? Grieve the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I pray we will not grieve the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We have to be obedient always. Listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. The fifth point. Walk the world as God dears children. If you go to chapter 5. I won't go there. He said, therefore, be imitators of God as their children and walk in love. In Christ also has loved you and given himself for you, an offering and a sacrifice to God for sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication, all those things, adultery, all those things should not be heard of us. We should walk worthy of our calling by walking as God's dear children. How many children of God are here? Are you a child of God? So you should walk worthy of your calling. I pray God will help us to walk worthy of our calling in the name of Jesus. 
And also, we need to walk with what? Perseverance. Not growing weary. Galatians 6, 9 said, if we do not faint in well-doing, what will happen? We will reap. When you are walking, you want to walk worthy of your calling. You need to be able to pacify. You need to be able to what? Endure suffering. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego go to that point. Even though he will not save us. They are not saying God cannot save. God is not that. Though. He can save. He has the power. He's the almighty, omnipotent, omnipotent. You know, he's too powerful. He can't fail. He, how will he not save his own people? He already promised Isaiah 43, I love it. When you pass through in your calling, in your walking with God, you will pass through certain things. But be sure that God is there to save you. And I pray he will save us in Jesus' name. And also, the last point here, follow your pathway. So how do you know your pathway? How do you know where God is calling you to? If you don't know your calling, you can pray to God. If you don't know, you can pray to God and say, show me my way. Show me my way. So this calling this morning is to the unsaved. If you are not yet saved, you have the opportunity. The grace is there for you to be saved this morning. If you are watching online or you are here and you are not yet saved, you can talk to God and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender all to you. I confess my sins and I confess you as the Lord and my Savior. Come right into my heart this morning. I want to accept you as the Lord and my Savior so that I can walk worthy of your calling. You cannot walk worthy of the calling of who you do not know. If you don't yet have a relationship with God, this is your opportunity to connect. Or if you have a relationship and your relationship has been broken apart, it has been shattered, you can bring the bridge together again. You can let those bridges be connected. You know, God can fix everything. Everything. He's saying, come back to me and I will receive you again. He's ready to receive you so that you can do what? Walk that work that God has called you unto. You are created for a purpose. And I pray that we will all serve our purpose in the name of Jesus. Just bow down your head and talk to God. If God is calling you and you are struggling with your calling or with answering, just like I struggled many years to accept. I remember even when I was a teenager, I said, God, I want to marry a man that fears you, but I don't want a pastor. I put that big clause there, but today, guess what? I, I did not just marry a pastor. I'm also a pastor. So that's why, you know, God knows us. Just pray. If you are struggling just like me, God is here to help you. To depend on God and you will see us through. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word that you have sent unto us, O Lord. Your word that you send, O Lord God Almighty, let it dilute with faith in our heart in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, are there people sitting that don't yet recognize their calling? Holy Spirit, because they have heard this message, Lord Jesus, we will speak to them in the name of Jesus. Let their eyes of understanding be enlightened. Let them know who they are in you, that they are created for, for a purpose. They are your workmanship. Open their eyes to see that which they need to do in the name of Jesus. And for those that are already in ministry that are struggling, you will strengthen them in the name of Jesus. For those that are saying, I'm, I'm giving my life to Jesus today, I pray you will accept them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.